Hello friends, it's Christy Marcotte. I just received my next scrapbook.com creative team package and I thought I would show you what's included. And I'll also be sharing a card using some of the new products. If you are interested in any of the items I show in this video, I do have links in the description box below. I'll set aside the markers, stamps, and dies for now and show you the brand new workspace mat. This is the white color. This is a self-healing mat. It's 24 by 18 inches. The grid markings are half an inch and along the very edge ruler, there's one eighth inch markings. It is double-sided. On the back side, it's a solid white. So if you don't want that grid look, you can always flip it over and use the other side. The dark rectangular markings on the very center of the mat are A2 size. So you have a vertical and a horizontal marking. And the large square outline is 12 by 12. Next, I'll show you two new shape die sets. These work with coordinating stamp sets. The first one is Lovely Bunches, and I did show this in last month's haul video. I love that there are dies for the three images and also for all of the sentiments. And the stamp set has a nice variety of sentiments. Thank you, thinking of you, love you bunches, hello sunshine, and best wishes. The other set is Sunshine Blooms. You can see I've already used this stamp set, but now I have the coordinating dies. And I will be using both of the sets on my card after I show all the new products. This set has a nice variety of floral and foliage images, plus the sentiment, Hello Sunshine. I received several die sets. This first one is an A2 card die called Fruit Slices. This is a really fun citrus design. You could make oranges, limes, lemons, grapefruit. Cut it out from some fun cardstock colors, add a sentiment, and your card is finished. And it coordinates really well with scrapbook.com's Market Bloom collection. There are three new word die sets. Each of the sets include two sentiments. The first set is called Let's Celebrate. It has the sentiment Happy Birthday and also Let's Celebrate. And I like how they include the word and also the outline. The next set is called Birthday Wishes. The sentiments are Let's Eat Cake and Birthday Wishes. And the final die set is called Hey There Friend. The sentiments are Hey There Friend and You're Fabulous. I really like the large, bold size of the sentiments. The next die set is called Market Bags, and this one is really fun. And I will be using this set for my card. It includes several fruit. There's watermelon, oranges, or you can make that grapefruit, lemons, or limes, plus some leaves and foliage pieces. The set also has two different styles of bags. There's the cloth bag and also the paper bag. And what's really fun, you can fit a gift card inside each of the bags. Scrapbook.com's Market Bloom collection has so many fun stamp and die sets, perfect for spring or summer cards. And continuing on with the fruit theme, there's the stamp and coordinating die set called You're So Sweet. It includes the large sentiment, You're So Sweet, some smaller sentiments, plus all the fun fruit images. If you love to color, you could stamp the outline, color that in, or you could use the solid piece and some colored ink. And I love having the coordinating dies. There's a die for all of the images and sentiments. And I have used this in a previous video. If you haven't watched that, I'll link it at the end of this video. The final two items I received are a couple of markers. I have a white brush marker and a black brush marker. The design is very similar to scrapbook.com's glitter brush markers, but these don't have any glitter. The ink is opaque. You can use them to add brush strokes to your die cut shapes, stamp images, or projects, or you can use them to add a fun white or black splatter on your project. I love adding splatter to my cards, so I was really excited when I saw the new product from scrapbook.com. I will be trying out the markers here with you for the very first time. First, remove the cap. 
then you can remove the yellow ring. You won't need that, so you can throw it away. Then you'll reattach the cap with the base. Now you'll pull off the cap. The brush tip is fairly stiff right away, so I like to gently push it down on some cardstock. I'll zoom in the camera just a little bit more so you can get a better look. On the side of the marker, it does have the word push. Gently squeeze the marker where it says push, and the fluid will start to come out and onto the bristles. Don't squeeze it too hard, and it does take a little bit to get the marker started. The white marker is fun. It's almost like invisible ink. You can't see it a whole lot right away, but as the ink dries, you can see that white color appear. Now right now, I'm just playing around, and it's really fun to watch that white ink appear. The ink also dries very quickly. Just depends on how much ink you get out. According to scrapbook.com's website, the liquid in the brush creates a satin-like finish and resembles enamel once it dries. And it really does have that enamel look to it. Now I'll do the same thing with the black marker. And the black marker seemed to start right away. You can see all that black ink saturating the brush. If you haven't tried scrapbook.com's glitter brush markers before, they are some of my favorite. And you start the ink flowing the exact same way. Their clear glitter brush marker is my most used, but they also have a fun rainbow of colors. So after playing around a bit, I thought I would try to do the splatter. First, I'm squeezing the marker and trying to get a little extra ink on the brush tip and then tapping the marker over my cardstock. But I didn't get enough ink on the brush, so I'm trying again. And after squeezing it one more time, I was able to get a few drops. I even created a little ink bubble. Not sure if you can see that in the video. So next, I pulled out an acrylic block, squeezed out some of the ink on the block, and then tap the brush over my cardstock, and that worked perfectly. You just have to practice when you get new products. When the ink completely dried, the drops do have that enamel look with a little bit of dimension. I do have a card to share with you using some of the products I just received in my Creative Team box. The pattern paper I'm using is scrapbook.com's Berry Sweet Collection. I'm using a pink and white gingham design for the background, layering it on some of the pink solid pattern paper, and these are both in the Berry Sweet collection. The adhesive I'm using is scrapbook.com's Deluxe Adhesive Roller. I'll put my card front onto a card base, set that aside for now. My card will be featuring the cloth bag, and I cut this out from craft cardstock. I'm adding a little extra ink on the edge of the bag using the Vintage Photo Distress Oxide ink. I'm doing the inking on scrapbook.com's white project grip mat. It was originally a 12 by 12 mat and I cut a small piece off. I like to use it to do some of the gluing, that way I don't get adhesive all over my work mat. Once I finish inking the bag, I'll set that and the card aside and start working on the stamping. I'll be using my Rose Quartz Misty. I already have the two flower images set up in my Misty. I'll start off by stamping the solid portion of the flower. I'm using Distress Oxide ink. This is the Kitsch Flamingo color. And I will ink it up a couple times to get a good solid impression. I'm also using the Stamp Pendable Stamping Tool from LDRS, and that helps get even pressure when stamping. Now I'll readjust the paper, flip around my Misty, and stamp the outline of the flower. I will wipe off the ink from the solid portion, that way I'm not wasting any of my white cardstock. Now I'll ink up the flower using Honeybee Stamps Intense Black Ink. And I will ink this up several times. I want to get a good, solid black impression. I started with the pink ink of the flower first. That way, when I add the outline, the black ink sits on top of the pink ink. Next, I'll stamp the center of the flower using Distress Oxide Squeezed Lemonade ink. I love this fun, bright color. 
Next, I'll use the coordinating die to cut out this beautiful pink flower. And I'll zoom back in so you can get a closer look. I'll line the die up with the stamped image, adhere the die in place using scrapbook.com's mint tape, and I'll run it through my Platinum 6 die cut machine. It adds that perfect white outline around the stamped image. And I didn't want to lose my die, so I did remove it from the paper and I'll adhere it back on the packaging. Now I'll bring back the card and the shopping bag and the flower will be going on the front of the bag. But first I'll fill the shopping bag with some fun foliage pieces. I'll add a little bit of adhesive on the back side at the top of the bag. The foliage pieces are from the Market Bloom Florals die set. I've already gone ahead and cut them out and I have them stored in scrapbook.com stack and sort trays. This is the smaller size tray. I'll add three of the greenery pieces. For the two smaller foliage pieces, I cut these out from the holographic mirror paper pad from scrapbook.com. It'll add that fun little sparkle. I'll just tuck all of the foliage pieces inside the bag, trying to figure out where I want to place this piece on the left. I don't want it completely hidden. I do need to add a little more adhesive on the back to secure that piece in place. Then I'll tuck in that final foliage piece on the right side of the bag. Then to help all of it stay together, I'll add a 1 4th inch strip of scrapbook.com's clear adhesive tape. Now remove the release paper, and I will be popping up the bag using some foam tape. This is the 1 millimeter foam in the 1 4th inch width. I'll make sure to get good coverage on the back side. I'll add one strip on the outside edge of the bag and put one piece on the inside. Behind the handle of the bag, I'll be using the foam strips. These are 1 8th of an inch wide and this is the 1 millimeter thickness. To get behind the top handle of the bag, I did cut one of the strips in half. And by removing the release paper, you can easily manipulate it to go around the curve. Now I'll remove the rest of the release paper and adhere the bag on the front of my card. I decided to also pop up the daisy using more of scrapbook.com's one millimeter foam, this time the large rounds. Although I'm only adding two of the rounds, Behind the rest of the flower, I'm using some of the negative portion of the foam. No reason to let that go to waste. The sheet of small rounds is supposed to be much longer, but I've been cutting up some of those leftover portions. After adhering that final foam piece down, I realized I do need to trim off just the corner. I don't want any of the foam visible behind the pink flower. Now I'll remove the release paper and adhere the flower on the front of the bag. Next I'll stamp the sentiment thank you and this is from the Lovely Bunches stamp set. I'm using my mini Misty this time. I have a piece of white cardstock and the stamp already set up and I'll ink up the sentiment using Honeybee Stamps Intense Black Ink. Now I'll cut it out using the coordinating die. Hold the die in place using more of scrapbook.com's mint tape. Then I'll run it through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cut machine. It always makes me happy when there are coordinating dies to go with the sentiments. Now to figure out where I want to add the sentiment. I don't have adhesive on the back yet, so I can move it all around my card until I'm happy with the placement and I decided to add it in the lower right hand corner of the shopping bag. For adhesive, I'll be using scrapbook.com's Artiste glue. Just put a little bit on the back side and I am holding the sentiment using a pair of reverse tweezers. I didn't realize until this video how much the label on my Artiste glue bottle has worn off, but the glue is still working just fine. Then I'll adhere it in the lower right hand corner, trying to make sure to get it nice and straight. It was a little harder to line up since I couldn't rely on the edges of the shopping bag. Those are not straight. 
For a final finishing touch, adding a little bit of sparkle to the center of the flower using scrapbook.com's Sunshine Yellow Glitter Marker. So there is my finished card. This one was so fun to make. I love the pretty spring colors. If you are interested in any of the products I showed or used in this video, I do have links in the description box below. And I will have more videos this month using the products I showed. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.